Wakanda, I come to thee as, well, yet another broken white man to bestow praise unto thee, and frankly, I am not worthy of it, but I'm going to do my damnedest anyway. <laughs> The latest from the MCU, I believe it would be number 18 at this point. This time it's directed by Ryan Coogler. We got to know Black Panther in Civil War, and it was a very smart move to introduce him there. So that way we had something familiar to carry us into this new and amazing hidden nation of Wakanda. The major success of this movie is the amount of dedication and detail it put into building this entirely new nation. And it is staggering the amount of detail work it puts into it. And I'm not just talking about the production design, which in itself is utterly awe-striking. I'm talking about the customs of Wakanda, the culture, the artwork. If this place were real, I would want to visit it so bad. And that's when you know a movie succeeds in creating a fictitious world. When you look at it and you go, I want to go there. Then you walk out of the movie and you're sad because it's just a movie. You know what, I'm an Orlandian. Wouldn't it be kind of cool that in Epcot Center it would be amazing if just randomly the Dora Milaje just start marching down the way in the Africa section of Epcot? Make that happen, Disney! It's a well-known fact, the stakes were really high on this one. Yes, there are a lot of cynics who are pointing out that Blade was, in fact, the first actual legitimate superhero movie featuring a black lead, but the thing is, there was little to no risk on that movie. They put like a base budget of maybe like 40, 50 million dollars on that and it made back its money in no time. It wasn't even number one at the box office at the time. This one, the stakes were colossal because it wasn't just one or two African-American leads. Now the cast is dominantly black. There's a load of money put on this movie. There's, it, when I heard the report, about 180, maybe 190 million dollars and the best part is it is not wasted. There's not a single frame in this movie that feels like they were messing around. I can definitely agree with some when I say I noticed some CGI issues. Yeah, we do rely on CGI for a lot of superhero action sequences. That's just a given. That's something you just have to happen. But the best part is you know where a movie's focus is when that's not the thing that makes you love the movie. Yes, the action's fun, action's a blast. My favorite standout sequence is the chase in South Korea, but the real reason this movie works is because of Wakanda and every inhabitant of it, every character who interacts with it, even the people who aren't from Wakanda, who have their own history with it. Even Andy Serkis as Claw, who we got to meet in Avengers Age of Ultron, you still feel his history with Wakanda and you understand his motivations leading up to it. Now before I get any further, I am going to say I'm going to avoid spoilers at all cost. A, because you guys really need to see this movie, and B, I also want you to keep watching this video, so I'm being courteous to you. There you go. Chadwick Boseman did not have to prove anything to us. He made a very strong impression in Captain America Civil War, so we just wanted to see him take the stage. This one is his movie. But the incredible thing that really makes this movie a standout is that it has such a significant focus on every character. This is one of the few Marvel Cinematic Universe movies where it didn't feel like hero, supporting, 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 supporting. This is one of the few where it was an ensemble piece every single person, every single main player in this one had an arc. Even characters that you thought when you saw the trailer were going to be minor, no, they all have emotional arcs and they all are not the same people they were when it kicked off and it's incredible. I had to give love to Michael B. Jordan. He finds stuff in this movie which in the hands of a much lesser actor would have come off as one note, but he was able to find the nuances of this character to make him one of the most interesting villains that the Marvel Cinematic Universe has offered. For me, that is high praise if you saw my video on the MCU villains. It is important to note when a villain is great, when you can find an understanding of his motivations, when you know their full story, you find yourself conflicted. And this is one of the things that makes Killmonger work as a villain. But on the other side, surrounding Black Panther, you've got Shuri, played by Letitia Wright, and she made a very strong impression. Meanwhile, you've got Lupita Nyong'o. She plays Nakia, a person who was once a member of the Dora Milaje, who decided to break off on her own and go out into the world and try to try and find some way to contribute to the world. The thing I love about her character is the way she conflicts with T'Challa. Not 
in a love-hate kind of thing, but in a philosophical level, she's telling him Wakanda can do more. Wakanda's worried about the outside world and the way it would react if they found out the true nature of Wakanda. And that segues into one of the major things which is so vitally important about this movie and why it is incredibly relevant. The problem is we, the world as we are now, we are a very exploitative world. If we see anything that is ripe for abuse, we feel the compulsion to want to go and leech off of it for all it's worth. When you see this place, it is beautiful. It is idyllic. It is this place that has actually found true civilization. Even the tribes that would conflict were able to find some kind of happy medium between each other. And even with the character Umbaku, played by Winston Duke, you see that he still respects what Wakanda is. And you, When you get to know him a lot more, he's a great character in his own right. That's what I mean. There's so much attention to all the characters and how they reflect the central theme of this movie. And the central theme is the idea of tradition versus progress. That was the thing that carries this movie all the way through. And you see how each of the characters react to this particular idea. Yes, you have Nakia who wants Wakanda to actually come out of the shadows and start contributing things to the world. But then you have Killmonger, who comes from the outside world, who is all too familiar with all the atrocities committed against him, his people, his heritage. And you get where he's coming from because, unfortunately, it's too well known of all the horrible things that mankind has done. And anytime there's anything truly good in this world, how we tend to do horrible things for our own benefit. So you can see why he's so hell-bent in his pursuits. Meanwhile, you've got Okoye, played by Dene Guerrera, who everyone loves from The Walking Dead. How can you not? She is a person who is bound by duty and, of course, the traditions of the Dora Milaje. You see her very devoted to her duty to her king, to Wakanda, but when the moment comes when she finds herself to be conflicted, you see that writ large upon her face, and her arc is stellar. And even how it conflicts with Wakabe, played by Daniel Kaluuya from Get Out, who I just recently honored in my 2017 retrospect. Even he himself, he was the one character who you do want to punch because of how, of how his character shifts. But once again, because the motivations are so well established, it works. And you can't begrudge him the decisions he makes. And that's the best part. When you have all these characters doing things that either you agree with or you disagree with, if you can't begrudge them, that's the sign of good writing. This is one of the few Marvel movies that's devoted strictly to characters and conflict and themes. Now, I'm not saying that any of the other ones ignored that. Far from it. That's one of the things I love about the MCU is the fact that they're more interested in telling interesting stories with superheroes. But this one wanted to take a vastly more mature route. When it comes to levels of mature themes, this one is right up there with Winter Soldier and Civil War. This one does not flinch away from telling hard stories with hard truths, and I admire it for it. And this is where I think DC just keeps falling flat. No matter what they do, they just seem to only be content making just superhero movies. Even Wonder Woman, which is a great movie and has a lot of wonderful moments and definitely does a great job displaying the importance of her particular type of heroism. In the end, it's just another superhero movie and that's it. Whereas this one wanted to focus on the greater themes and it utilizes all these characters from a popular medium to reflect certain themes which are very relevant to this day and age. So with all the words of praise I'm showering on this movie, is there anything I can say against it? I will say, yeah. Uh, there were points where I was going, wow, this movie's kind of long. But even then, I can't really bring myself to knock down points for that because it never feels like they're wasting my time at all. It feels like every moment there kind of counts. That, I would say, is my major niggle. So with all this said, where does this movie fit on the less to more scale on the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Frankly, I don't know. I may do a less to more down the line. I may not. There's a lot of movies to get through, and it's an ever-changing lineup so it might be a bit difficult to do so with that i'm going to say black panther is one of the most passionately made exquisitely detailed mcu films and i cannot wait to see what they're going to do with t'challa next and i'm very happy that we're going to be seeing him and we're going to be seeing wakanda again in infinity war so with that i'm going to leave you with my final narcotic casserole rating of 
Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you think that this is not even close to the MCU's best? Or do you think that this is probably one of the most important movies to come out of the MCU? Leave it in the comments below. And for more addictive content and narcotic casserole, simply like, share, subscribe, click. Thou shalt be served.